<laughs> good evening, good gentles, new friends, because I think I recognize one face on here. Um, hi, I'm Brianna Cassia. I am from the Barony of Lionsgate. I am a courtier first, then a lancer, and currently the baronial chatelaine, the baronial equestrian officer, and the current reigning kingdom equestrian champion. We're not going to talk about horses, I promise, because <laughs> uh, an hour is not nearly long enough. Um, what we're going to talk about is courtesy and etiquette in the current Middle Ages, um, with occasional references to uh, courtesy and etiquette throughout history. Um, but because the SCA's period is so broad and covers so much, um, not just in time, but also in like geography, um, it's you can't say that one rule applied to all cultures pre 17th century because there was no such rule. Um, there are cultures where farting in public is okay. Uh, this isn't one of them. <laughs> Bodily functions are fine. Just keep it, keep it quiet. Um, so uh, the first thing I want to talk about, which most people who've been in the SCA for any length of time have heard reference to, but perhaps maybe have never read the actual, um, from the original Known World Handbook published in AS like 12, um, is the Ten Commandments of the SCA. And they're a little out of date because they do feature some genderisms, um, which we I'll talk about as we do as we go through them. Number one is uh, treat your inferiors in rank, knowledge, or experience in the society as if they were your equals. Treat your equals as if they were your superiors. Treat officers as representatives of their majesties, and treat the king and queen with the reverence due your sovereigns. That sounds easy. Um, but treating your inferiors in rank or experience in the society as if they were your equals when you don't know what they know. The real key there is that you have to be humble. Um, everyone should acknowledge that they're, they're, they're not perfect people. Um, so the idea is that anyone that you encounter probably knows more and has been through more in some way than you have. And if you approach every person you meet with that same degree of humility of, it's great to meet you, and yes, I know what I'm talking about, but also you probably know what you're talking about too. Um, what you're doing is you're leveling a playing field. This rule applies more when you're talking about castes of society, when you're talking about um, servant class. Um, and the SEA has an interesting approach to servitude um, in that we don't consider it a, a lower, a lowering. Um, whereas, you know, the society that the society is based on was Victorian England and, uh, and it did have servant classes and there were lowerings of rank. Um, in the Middle Ages, there, were, there was a, a certain cachet to being a servant of a higher ranking person. So it's, it, cupbearer was a, a, a desired rank in the early Irish period, for example. So um, we can't look at it with one lens. You have to look at it from the view of us being a modern society first and foremost. And in a modern society, we're all equals. So even, um, it doesn't matter how long someone's been around. Uh, and, and quite often you'll get a new person in who is a person in the real world, who's a doctor or, or a, a, a professor at a university, um, and they're, they're going to have a different experience and they're going to carry themselves differently. So if we approach everyone as though they were equal in rank to us or greater, um, we come across a little more approachable. There, that's a lot of words for that sentence. <laughs> um, treating uh, your equals as if they are superior. So I'm a Lancer. Um, I will treat my other, my, my siblings in, in the um, courtiers and the lancers and the sergeantry of Lionsgate, um, I will defer to their experience and their knowledge. Um, when one of my siblings contacts me to ask a question about uh, something, if it is something I know, then I give the answer. And, you know, if it isn't, then I have to know who does know. Um, so giving them the credit of being, you know, higher, a more uh, of a greater understanding than I am. Um, officers as the representatives of the crown. This is actually really important because quite often an officer is acting in a modern capacity. We have our council meetings in modern clothes. We don't, um, we don't treat each other in, in the real world differently. But when someone is speaking 
about their office, it's important to understand that they are speaking with an awareness of the rules of the of the legality of their branch, their office, and the kingdom and the principality. Um, that uh, they might have a deeper perspective on it. And because they are an officer, if they say something that's official, it's official. Um, until it's countered by the upline, it's official. So it's important to understand that. Um, at events, that comes into play as at events, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and treating the king and queen with the reverence do your sovereigns. This has to do with our game, what we're doing here. We're wearing these really pretty clothes, and we're acting in a way that is closer to the ideal of what we want to see in the world. Wouldn't it be great if everyone was courteous, if everyone treated their equals as their betters, everyone um, defer to people and, and humble and we're honest, wouldn't it be great? And so that's the society we're trying to recreate. Um, the majesties are the embodiment of virtue. That's how the SCA looks at them, uh, by, by virtue of his inspiration and her strength of arms or the other way around. Um, the, they are the embodiment of the virtues we espouse and aspire to. So treating them with reverence. Um, in the real Middle Ages, there were absolutely consequences for not giving your sovereign the reverence they were due. Um, we do not, you know, we're never going to say off with your head, but being aware of that historical, especially if it was different in your culture. Like if you're, if you specialize in and you're interested in, um, you know, Polish Hussar culture, then you're going to have a different approach to the people wearing the crowns. If you're Mongolian, you have, again, a different perspective on who the people wearing the crowns are. Approaching them in persona is a fascinating and in-depth way to respond to the situation. But either whatever the method you choose and whatever your persona is, um, treating the king and queen with reverence is part of what we do. And it is, it's actually a very important part. So that's number one of the Ten Commandments. Um, it goes into that again. Number 10 is uh, basically a repeat of rule number one as far as the king and queen are concerned. Um, so use medieval forms of address is number two. <laughs> there are so many forms of address. In the barony of Lionsgate, the baron and baroness are their excellencies. And um, there are gentles who have earned a court barony, which in on tier is equivalent to an AOA. Um, they have not earned the entitlement of excellency, but because all of them are really cool people, and that's how we treat people who are really cool people in Lionsgate, we call them excellency anyway. If they're wearing a baronial coronet, they've got pearls on the tips of their coronet, they're called an excellency because you don't know how they got that. You don't know if they're land or territorial or if it was a court uh, gesture from the crown. So um, using medieval forms of address helps the ambiance but you might not know what someone's term of address is. You might not know their rank. Um, you have to judge based on what you see. And I'm not going to give you a rote list of, oh, well, if there's strawberry leaves, which look like this, um, on a crown, then it, or on a coronet, then it's the Duke. Um, you don't need to know that. What you need to know is that um, if you're approaching everyone with the same degree of humility, forthrightness, and honesty, then you're being courteous. Um, you're not going to walk up to anybody on the street and just shake their hand and go, hi, I'm, I'm this and I'm all that. You're going to treat everyone with the same degree of respect. The SCA requires that the term of rank, if someone says, oh, I'm a king and I prefer to be called his majesty, then yes, your majesty is the correct response to that. But most people are a little more relaxed than that. Most people don't have a, a firm, I like this, and I refer, I prefer this. Um, in Lionsgate, the courtiers are a separate order than the sergeantry. Uh, we do the arts and sciences and service aspects to the level of the sergeantry, um, and we're tested on the same kinds of, you know, uh, well-roundedness, if you will. Um, one of the things that we are tested on is our knowledge and understanding of uh, terms of address for various ranks. Um, and the, the, the fact of the matter is it's more important that you know what your persona would have called that person than what our SCA 
organization would call that person um, because we uh, ascribe to a certain amount of historical accuracy. So if my persona would refer to you as a graph, not a duke, then I would refer to you as a graph. And I'm not going to be marked down for knowing that. Um, it is perfectly okay to call everyone, my lord, my lady, good gentle. I'm adding that in because the standard is gendered and um, it doesn't need to be. Good gentle, most noble, those are all perfectly valid and non-gendered ways to greet someone or um, address someone. If you don't want to use those terms, the best thing to do is actually ask the person what their preferred entitlement is. Um, communication gets you through a lot. So if you just say, uh, you know, you can ask them or their retinue, if they're a, a seated noble, you can ask their retinue what terms they prefer. Um, when I worked for Darius and Morgane many, many years ago, um, they actually published a guide to their reign, which was like a six page booklet, which detailed how they preferred to be addressed, what kind of things they were gonna do in their courts. And it was actually very helpful. Um, if you want to use an appropriate term for your own self, when someone asks you what you'd like to be called, make sure that it matches your real SCA rank um, because we all like to be uh, important people, but sometimes you can use a term that's actually um, proprietary to the SCA. So um, yeah. Also, if you're using the term for your own persona, you are actually educating people as you talk about it. You're um, letting people know what the different terms are okay and that uh, different terms were used throughout uh, the period. Number three, be faithful to your Lord and your word. If you swear an oath or state a fact, make sure of your commitment to what you're saying. Um, part of what we strive for in the SCA is a sense of honor that we can trust each other to do what we say we're going to do. Um, that doesn't happen overnight. The more you can be as good as your word, um, the more folks will see that quality in you and strive, again, again, it's about aspiring, strive to emulate it in themselves. Um, being faithful to your Lord is when you make an oath to someone. Being faithful to your word is that that's a personal thing. When, when you say you're going to do something, it's not, you know, I swear I will be there, my Lord. It's, I'll do what I can to be there. Well, then do what you can to be there. Um, another aspect of that is knowing yourself. And this is something we, it's, it's less to do with courtesy and etiquette and more to do with um, enjoying the experience of the SCA, where so many of us have the tendency to go, oh, I want to help and put that hand up, even if we don't have the skills, even if, well, I can learn on the job. Um, it, knowing that you don't or knowing that you're learning something, it's important because if you're giving your word on it and then you flake or fall down on it or don't ask for the help you need, um, hi, guilty, um, then you, it reflects on the long-term uh, perspective of your personal honor. Um, and it's something that when I was a teenager in the SCA, I combated a lot because I would volunteer for things, try and step into a, a space that I wasn't ready for and uh, it came back many years later, people would be like, yeah, but didn't you do this on that? And I was like, oh, wow, you remember that, great. You know, I'm older now, I'm more mature. I, if I say I'm gonna do something, I do it because that is what being a person of honor entails. Um, so now we get, into the, we get into the really gendered bit. Number four is gentlemen, honor all ladies. And number five is ladies, be worthy of that honor. Um, there's no reason for these to be gendered these two rules are the same thing. Um, the best way of approaching this idea is that we are striving to be the best versions of ourselves. Um, a bit idealized. Uh, we want people to want to be like us and we want to be worthy of them wanting to be like us. So we need to weigh our choices um, in, and act and be in the world. It's not about acting, it's not a role. It's about actually embodying um, be a person who is inspiring and be a person who is worthy of being inspired. Um, inspiration is, is something that's actually really fundamental to the SCA. It's fundamental to our experience. Um, it's also fundamental to our governance. Um, when someone inspires you, they are engendering in you an awareness of your flaws and the deep-seated drive 
to fix those flaws, to become a better person. Um, the, the, the gestures of the genteel games we play um, are less important than what's actually going on inside of us. So anyway, um, the gendering of the rules obviously are, uh, we're in a modern society and the less, the more we can step away from uh, things like ladies be worthy of honor, um, everyone be worthy of honor. Everyone, honor everyone. Um, if your particular game is quite gendered, make sure that the people that you're playing with are also happy to be playing that game. Uh, not everyone is, so. Um, number six, touch no man's goods unasked, give and receive with grace. This is one of those, did we need to state that as a rule? But the fact is, and I found this to be 100% true, especially at things like demos, when we are surrounded by the accoutrements of cool, the stuff that we have desired for years to be in our environment, swords, armor, horses, hawks, really pretty clothes, um, we can get carried away. Everyone can get carried away. We have acquisitive natures. We're all ravens and raccoons. We want to touch the pretty. Um, and we have to really guard against that. Um, try to express our enthusiasm without actually contacting the objects of such emotions. Um, but also be aware that other people are going to have this response. It's fine for us to, we've been around a while. If you've been to the SCA for like a couple of years, you know better than to, ooh, cool, touch. But other people may be new and they may have the, um, they may get carried away. And you, you have to be gentle. You have to not take it personally and go, hi, um, that's actually mine. I have this issue. Uh, I used to take the bus with my drum all the time. I'd go places. I go to dance practice and drum for the dancers. Um, people would just touch my instrument. And I'm like, if, if this were a guitar, would you touch it? No. Why are you touching my drum? But it's because it's cool and people want to be in contact with that. So you have to learn to be um, generous and gentle when you're correcting someone on that kind of a behavior. Um, consent, that's what it is. It's consent is super important. Receiving with grace is not just being thankful for gifts and service, um, but acknowledging the effort that people have made to give you something, to, um, to help you feel welcome. Uh, the generosity of spirit that it is to give of oneself. Um, Again, that's that's it's it's plain, but it's it's also there's a, there's a, there are refinements to it. Um, when you meet someone who is genteel and generous of spirit, uh, they touch you in in ways that are uh, that echo down the years. Baroness Amanda Kendall was my inspiration for this virtue by far, and uh, I will never be as generous of spirit as she was. Um, seven, be gentle to the stranger. That's that's tying back into what we were talking about before. Um, Every soul we meet is a stranger until you get to know them. Um, your friends, you didn't know their whole lives. Uh, it's easy to be generous of time when we're not rushed or busy. And at events, especially if you're aspiring to the rank of sergeant, which is a job, uh, you're gonna get busy. So it's really important to remember that rule applies when you're busy. Um, there's an old truism to the SCA that every player is a chatelaine and uh, one bad encounter can sour a person for life on the SCA. I encounter it a lot. So it's good to know, like it's, it's good to keep in mind. Um, number eight is a really interesting one. I love this one. Raise your sword, not your voice. Back in the day, it was considered de rigueur that if you had a real problem with someone, you could challenge them to a duel. And um, that was seen as a more medieval solution than arguing loudly about things at the Bardic Fire. Um, there's an etiquette to dueling. I haven't seen a real settling of an actual grievance through the trial of the body uh, in over three decades. Uh, there's a good reason for that. Duels are fought for fun and they can be, but a basic rule of combat is do not go into it in an emotional state of you know, turbulence. Uh, for good reason, you don't want to hurt your friends, you just wanna kill them. Um, so that whole thing about dueling uh, raise your sword, not your voice. The other thing that that means is if you're actually upset about something, stand by your, um, stand by your beliefs. 
Um, and I think that's actually important. It's not very clear from the way the rule is, is written. Um, but the other aspect of that is not raising your voice. Uh, being loud is in many, many, many cultures considered rude, unless you're a herald and it's your job. So there you go. Um, number nine is I'm sure a rule all of you have heard. Let the slain man tell if he be slain. Uh, this rule sits at the heart of all of our combat games. Uh, it applies to every contender in every type of tournament, from a duel of bards to crown. Um, it is not the right of anyone not fighting to decide how or if another should take a blow. And that right there is the core of honor. It's important to realize that that's also a core of self-knowledge. If you're aware, you're like, uh, got it. That was a good shot. Um, and the, your opponent can contend with you, but it's not up to anybody else to do it. Um, I find it interesting that this is the only rule that when I ask someone if they've heard of the Ten Commandments of the SCA, this is the only one that anybody can quote. Very few people have like absorbed the rest of them, but because our combat system is so prevalent to everything we do, everyone's heard this rule. Um, the last one, number 10, is again, reverence the king and queen. As the crown represents the ideal version of our society, giving honor to them is a way to recognize the choices and the virtues that we aspire to. We bow to the crown, uh, to the empty thrones, and to the coronets to show respect and courtesy. But mainly, it's a part of the game we play. It's to make uh, it feel more not where we live now. Um, it helps contribute to the atmosphere. It creates uh, an unusual circumstance. And uh, it can be a very hard habit to break if you picked it up as a teenager. Um, okay, so those are the 10 rules of the SCA um, and rules for basic courtesy. Um, we're gonna cover some generalities as well. Um, one of the most key things that we learn in the SCA, one of the most important rules we have is hold. When a hold is called, what that means. We all know it means freeze, stop doing what you're doing, whatever it is. If you're shooting an arrow, unknock, put it back in the quiver until the hold is released. Uh, if you're on the war field, it means drop your, drop your weapons or drop your guard and kneel. Um, the fight is done for now. Um, and it is specifically a safety thing. Um, I'm a marshal, I'm a junior um, archery marshal and a senior equestrian marshal. And hold is one of those things that you have to teach. Um, but once someone's got it, it applies to every situation in the SE. It does not just apply to martial pursuits. Anyone can call a hold. That's another rule of the hold. Um, you, don't, you don't call a hold unless you see a need, but anyone can call it. You don't need a marshal it. You don't need an authorization. Um, of course, if you do it all the time just to see what people do, eventually you're going to get talked to by somebody wearing a very pretty hat. Um, Meeting people. And when you're new to an area and literally don't know anyone, let them know at gate. Uh, you can ask specifically for their chatelaine or just anyone who would not mind a tag along. And being helpful to people is a really great way to introduce yourself. Um, make sure you have that before you ask before you have someone's armor bag. Uh, rule six. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the fact of the matter is courtesy is behaving in a courteous manner. Um, you learn greetings, phrases, uh, pleases, thank yous, excuse me, bless you, um, or verbal courtesies and modern ones. There are medieval equivalents. If you want to learn them, you can. Uh, you may have to explain them to people because they may not be as familiar with them. There are physical courtesies as well. Holding doors open is not a gendered way of saying I'm stronger than you. It's saying my hands are clear and I can open this door. Um, Assisting someone in carrying a load, uh, arranging a hall or a site, uh, opening doors, wrangling children or pets or giant bags of armor. These are ways to be courteous. They're physical ways to say, I'm glad you're here. Can I help you with that? Um, if you have the time and energy and the wherewithal to help someone, then do so. That is courtesy. That's the soul of courtesy. Um, there's etiquette. Those are the rules that you know, define how we are courteous, but uh, something like, like introductions, um, meeting people. Um, trying to gauge how much information someone needs in an introduction. Okay, so if I'm introducing my Baron, Kinneric Bearson, 
to someone else in the SCA. I'm going to use all of their ranks and titles. I'm going to ensure that he knows how important they are in our game. But if I'm introducing um, Jonathan the new, who's at his second fight practice, I'm not going to use all of their titles and entitlements because Jonathan has no point of reference. So I'm going to introduce them as, oh, this is Guillermo and he is an armorer. That's all Jonathan is going to be able to cope with. He's going to meet so many people. So it is courteous to tone it down when you're dealing with someone who's new. It is also courteous to use all of the titles when making a formal introduction to someone who has titles already. So there's a little bit of a weighing game that you do in your head when you're making an introduction within the SCA. One of the key things here is that people need to make introductions. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been at an event and had a 10 minute conversation with someone before going, hi, I'm Brianna. <laughs> Because the person that I'm with who was a friend of theirs and who's wandered off now didn't bother to make that introduction. I think formal introductions are a brilliant opportunity to um, give someone an in to a community. And we are we tend to get clicky. So it's important that we are making those efforts. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this when I'm done doing the whole thing. I'd love to hear what people have to say about how they introduce and what um, criteria and how they, yeah, how they do it. I'm, I'm interested to know. Um, okay, the, when I joined the SCA, I was 13. So that was a long time ago. I'm turning 50 this year, boy. Um, that said, when I was introduced to anyone in the SCA as a 13 year old, fresh faced young girl, uh, they kissed my hand, the gentleman kissed my hand. And boy, howdy, that's gonna hook a kid super fast on the SCA is having someone treat you with that degree of uh, gentility and care. Um, it is, however, a bit creepy. Let's look at it fairly, look at it honestly. In the 37 years since 1983, times have changed. And the idea of some elderly gentleman kissing a 13-year-old girl's hand is going to go, wait, what? So times have changed, rules have changed. If I am with a person who's been around that long and I offer them my hand, I am saying it's okay to take my hand and kiss it. They can take it and shake it. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's that it is on the, um, it is on the person who's being offered that. They can choose what to do with it. But otherwise, you don't reach for a lady's hand and, and kiss it. That's, that's creepy and weird, and we don't do that anymore. Um, those are subtler points to negotiate. So is elaborate bowing. Kowtown, we have a um, sergeantry candidate this year in Lionsgate who is Mongolian. And he does the full, all the way down to the ground kowtow um, before his royalty. Um, it's wonderful to watch. But we don't have the expectation that everyone's going to be a, able to do that, much less... Um, uh, wants to because that 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 is a very deep meaning thing um, so negotiating those subtler points those those take time they depend on the era they depend on the event um, and so you you'll want to be careful about them um, but yeah if you're in doubt of an action of introduction or just associating with someone if you're in doubt about whether or not that's okay don't do it fair straight rule don't do it you can tell them 10 years later hey i thought about doing that at the time um because you don't want to come off as creepy you don't want to come off as weird or rude or um inappropriate i have a rule which i think is a i think it's courtesy i think it's i think it applies um certainly the best leaders that i've known in the sca gerhard kendall um duke darius duke skepti um mistress is old uh commend in public and correct in private. If they see or experience something that is great and they want to see it happen again, they make a big deal of, out of it in public. They name names, they post it to social media, they talk about it in court, um, they are specific and they write letters of recommendation that way. Um, if you have an issue with someone or something that happens at an event, um, a more circumstr 
a more circumspect approach gets you further. Um, if you have a problem with someone speaking to them privately, quietly, out of the way of the main, not in court and not at court, but to say, you tell them as rationally as you can what happened, how it affected you, and it, that gets you further. That solves the problem often before it becomes a problem. Um, honesty and communication are key um, in just being adults. Um, many bigger issues are settled that way before anything awful has happened. It's straight up rude to grumble or complain about things um, to people who weren't there and didn't see it. Uh, it's, you know, I understand that the, we have a vent culture. We have a culture that says I'm mad about this and I'm going to tell my friends. Um, but if you're not willing to address things head on, then complaining about them is, um, it's counterproductive. It enforces and reinforces the negative emotion without giving it anywhere to go and giving it any way to be resolved. Um, again, that is my experience and I'm sure that people have differing perspectives. I'd love to talk about that. Um, okay, the etiquette of attorneys. Attorneys are structured around contenders in combat. They are the focus. Um, they usually begin with an invocation of the lists overseen by sitting nobles, heralded officially, all of that. I'm sure you've all seen a tournament. Um, the prize title or point of the tourney and any specific rules governing it are laid out at that time. That's important because if you're not a part of that tourney and you're making noise while they're trying to get the rules down, then you're being obtuse and that's not, that's not courteous or polite. So being aware of where you are and what is happening around you, even if you're not participating in the main is it's important because then you can remove yourself from the servants, from the situation. Um, different attorneys have different rules regarding pairings. Sometimes this is a point of etiquette. Um, pairings can be laid out, uh, according to the order of precedence. Uh, not everybody has memorized their OP number. OP numbers change every six months, three months. They change all the time. Um, and so having access to it, we have the internet, we have phones. You can look up the OP online and have an up-to-date access to who should be standing where in line. Um, most of these things and the per court processionals, that kind of thing where, where etiquette is and, and precedence matters. Um, these are gonna be taken care of by a person whose job it is, uh, whether they are an official herald or whether they are a um, working for the sitting nobles, then they're gonna take care of that. But if you can help, if you have an understanding of how the order of precedence works and you know how this processional type works, then you can help, you can assist. Um, it took like 18 heralds to wrangle us all at September Crown this last year. So the more people helping often, the better. Um, succession attorneys have a d distinct set of rules uh, regarding processionals and pre presentation of contenders, orders of business like oath taking. Uh, championship attorneys, same thing. There's often oaths to be taken. Again, if you're not a part of the main thing, you can be there to witness, but bearing witness means being silent so that those who need to hear it can. Um, it is polite to listen to heralds, but it is a rule to listen to them if they are performing their official duty. Um, wars have the same thing going on, the tactical rules and parameters. Everyone who's participating needs to be quiet and listen to the marshals or those setting up the scenarios. This is how um, this is how we learn how, how you win, right? Tactical meetings, okay, so at an interkingdom war, for example, um, uh, tactical meetings are held the night before. Uh, the West Kingdom meets in their tent and the Ontarian army meets in their tent as the commanders of each you know, unit or whatever. Um, if you're not invited, you shouldn't attend. And you'll be invited by the person running the meeting. And sometimes uh, I've been invited to assist or I've been invited to um, serve, like serve the drinks while the men are talking about the thing. Um, and being aware that you're being trusted for your discretion, uh, it gives a certain cachet to the experience, but it's, we don't spy. I mean, we don't have, you know, spies sneaking around from camp to camp and sharing tactics and strategies because this isn't life or death. It's a game. If it's fun for you to wander about and spy on things, then that's on you. It has nothing to do with what we do in the SCA. Um, the etiquette of court. 
Uh, sitting nobles are often heralded in when they are usually we are rising, we are usually standing. Um, but as we've become more aware of people with mobility issues, this is not enforced. If someone is sitting, they're sitting for a reason. Uh, where the rule of etiquette lies is, is if you are judging them for sitting when the king and queen walk in. They might be sitting because they need to. And it's not, um, invisible uh, handicaps are a thing. And we've become much more conscious of these things. I've actually been really appreciative of things like the Silent Herald and um, uh, the, the kneelers that are designed to be sat on as well as kneeled on. I think this is wonderful and it's definitely a sign that we are progressing as a society within the larger society. Um, if you are heralding in the sitting nobles, confirm with them what you're allowed to say before you say it. Um, I've, I've been in trouble for this. So <laughs> that's a point of etiquette. Um, the order of sitting nobles is rulers, king and queen, heirs, crown prince and crown princess, principals, princesses and princesses, barons and baronesses, and other uh, territorial uh, rulers. And anyone else who's invited into court, which can mean visiting royalty. Um, if it is a crown event, then the rulers are seated first. But if the rulers are visiting your barony and they're at a local event, they can be welcomed into the court if they're not running the court themselves. If it is a baronial level court and the king and queen are not gonna take it over, then, and that's all stuff that's negotiated well beforehand by the um, court coordinators, the heralds and the nobles involved. Um, there, it, both ways are acceptable. There's nothing wrong with the king and queen saying it is now a kingdom court. Um, even if they came in after the baron and baroness, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the points of etiquette about who sits where, those are shuffled and juggled depending on the needs of the time. Um, sometimes, uh, generally speaking, we try to keep uh, seated couples together. So the baron and baroness of Terra Pomeria would be on one side and the baron and baroness of um, uh, Lionsgate would be on the other side of the crown prince and princess, say. Um, you wouldn't separate them as, oh, the barons are on this side and the baronesses are on that side, unless it's a really good joke, um, which sometimes the king thinks it's a good joke and that's what ends up happening. Um, again, all of, almost all of this is coordinated well before the court itself. Um, if you are serving your Baron and Baroness, and I'm speaking specifically to the sergeantry applicants here. If you are serving your Baron and Baroness and there is a court coming up, it's one of the things that you can do is volunteer to go and talk to the court coordinator about where they want your nobles, your noble patrons to come in, uh, whether you want them heralded in, whether where they're gonna sit to make sure that the thrones are there, that whatever they need behind the thrones is there. All of those things are, are more to do with the duties of being a, a good servitor to your nobles, but there you go. That's one of the, uh, one of the points. <laughs> um, camping events, heralds are the lifeline. They're the news, they're, they, they know what's going on. If you are hearing a herald do their job, let them do their job. Thank them for doing their job. If you can hear them, thank them. Um, uh, be nice to each other. That's a pretty basic rule. So don't be a dick. Um, but in terms of courtesy and etiquette, sometimes we need to be reminded, especially when we're hot, sticky, and eaten by bugs. Um, clean up after yourselves. The SCA has a long-standing reputation for leaving a site cleaner than we found it, especially in the light of how modern music festivals and get-togethers have left thousands of pounds of trash in public parks, uh, it's really important for us to continue to be uh, desirable tenants of public lands in particular. Um, banquets and feasts, sit-down feasts, have several courses brought to each table. Servers are volunteers and they're in the same game you are, they are not thralls. I've been called a wench while serving at a feast and it, it made me mad, it was hurtful. Um, treat your servers well and courteously. If you see that there's a shortage of servicers, volunteer, if you can do it, volunteer. Serving can be a lot of fun. Uh, in Lionsgate, we try to sing the uh, dishes in. Uh, we, I, I write little rounds and sing them in and it's a lot of fun. Um, in medieval times, it was a mark of honor to be asked to serve head table. So sometimes there will be peers who fight over the uh, right to 
serve the pretty food to head table. Um, feasts may also feature toasts. This is honestly the main use of courtiers in Lionsgate, it seems, is asking, okay, who gives the toasts? Who does the toast? What toasts do we do? Um, because quite often, um, barons and baronesses are like, oh yeah, we do that, don't we? <laughs> Certainly Ariana, it was very funny, her first baronial banquet. She's like, oh, I'm in charge of that. Oh no. That's why she has courtiers. So <laughs> um, the, uh, this is, it's not a free for all. It's arranged beforehand. You look at who is attending the event, you look at their order on the order of precedence, and you um, write down the list of toasts, and you generally ask them which toast they want to do and then put them in the right order. Um, it will vary depending on your branch. I don't know how Terra Pomeria does it, but this is kind of a standard. I've seen this done in many branches. Um, I lived in Secret for a while and I've traveled a lot of the kingdom and this seems to be fairly common. Uh, if not, hey, Terra Pomeria, here's an idea. It's a lot of fun, you should do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna hear about this after, I'm sure. Um, classes and symposiums, uh, point of etiquette. As somebody who's taught an awful lot of classes, let teachers teach. We're all excited about the topic. We wouldn't be in the class if we weren't, but if we're talking, they're not teaching. And there may be people in the class who need that information, who've never, never um, had the opportunity to hear the one perspective that that teacher has. The time to pick their brain is after the class. I had a great class with um, Master Arian the Wanderer, uh, after which we literally talked for three straight hours about mounted archery. So yeah. Wait till after the class to have that really great story. Um, and recall that teachers and administrators of these things are often not professionals of education or administration of education. It's, it can be very stressful to coordinate one of these things. So again, they're helping you have fun. So be nice, be nice. Um, last point about etiquette online. Uh, this is new. As it happens, human beings struggle to separate online personas from real life interactions. Uh, your choices, your actions, words written down are often heard in the worst light possible. Um, everyone filters what they read through their own unconscious emotional state. And so your sense of humor might not come through. Your rape, your wit can cut. And you never know what someone else might be going through that day. So it's important to remember that. Also online, there is a record. It doesn't go anywhere. People can pull up what you said five years ago or that embarrassing picture of you from 37 years ago. Um, and especially in SCA circles, you need to be aware of how you present yourself. Um, if you wouldn't say something in person, then do not say it online. Sounds simple. To this day, we're still learning about it. So, all right, I have said, I think I've said everything I need to say. That was four pages of me blithering. <laughs> so um, does anyone have, um, <laughs> Zuleika, I like the idea of uh, kids as spies. I love it, it's great. So um, yeah, does anyone have anything they want to talk about? Uh, anything, any particular point of etiquette you want to cover if there's something you need to hear? Go ahead, Luther. Um, I've got nothing at the moment. It's been great, though. I love all the information <laughs> you provided. Um, it's practically, my it's being in for four years is the first time I've actually heard the Ten Commandments of the SCA. So it was really enlightening to know that exists. Good. Good. I'm glad. Thank you for coming to the class. Um, I literally, you can type in a courtesy in the SCA, and that's the second wiki that comes up. <laughs> <laughs> Google it, man. <laughs> all right. Anybody else? No, I I, uh, I really appreciate everything you've gone over. Like Luther, I've been playing for six years and I had never heard of this <laughs> either. But the, the, yes, I really appreciate the interpretation of those rules. And uh, yes, the, the uh, gendered, alternatives for, for gendered greeting is uh, very useful, especially where, where we are right now. Um, right. It, it, it's something that we don't always have access to as far as good alternatives to um, to what are sometimes um, habitual. Uh, yes. So, and some of us are still struggling with what's acceptable. Yeah. Right. Like, what is considered truly neutral? Is it considered 
neutral but too high or neutral but too low <laughs> the right level <laughs> yeah. so neutral but too high is interesting because i used to call baroness amanda i used to call her your grace and she could get she get mad at me every time she'd be like i'm an excellency and i'm like nope you're very graceful She's like, Stop it. <laughs> so um and and at the same time in in certain periods uh to refer to your 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 liege uh, you would refer to him as your grace um even if he was sitting king he majesty is the title but that's the sca title and grace is perfectly reasonable for certain periods so i run into that with knights a lot and fighters i i grew up in a military family i was in the air force Mm -hmm. Sir is common greeting. It is a form of respect. I call everybody sir or ma'am, and I often get thrown into, I'm not a sir, don't call me that. I was like, ah, I've got 20 <laughs> years of habit behind me. Good luck with that. In Lionsgate, you get a lot of, uh, I'm a sergeant, I work for a living. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Classic no, spin. I absolutely, I do the same thing. I refer, I say good sir. Um, I say good sirrah. <laughs> Um, and, uh, but honest to God, good, gentle and noble are both perfectly valid non-gendered terms. And, um, the more, I think as time goes on, we're going to hear more people using them, uh, more generically. It's not going to be my Lords, my Lords and ladies. It's good gentles, pray attend. Like Raven, it looks like you might have something you wanted to say. Ooh, Raven, is that a backdrop or are those your actual weapons? Cause damn. <laughs> <It's a backdrop>. <laughs> <laughs> damn. Damn. <laughs> That was my toys when I was a fighter in the wars back in the day. <laughs> I just, it looked like you had, you had wanted to add something there and we had, we had talked oh, over yourself. So. I'm flipping through my notes, looking at the stuff, so. Okay. Uh, I, I did like want to make, I was oh, going to yeah. say, I wanted to make a comment uh, um, about missing Amanda because when I first met Amanda, um, it was a nice, mellow introduction and everything. All the things are going on and stuff. And then she had me escort her for a little bit because, you know, she liked to hold on to a, on our, a, a nice She liked handsome man. young men, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then I didn't see her for like three or four years. And she came up and greeted me and knew my name and remembered everything. I was like, my God, that woman had such a memory. What was interesting about Amanda was you're not wrong. Her memory was encyclopedic. Um, we used to joke slash hint that maybe she had a file cabinet and had a folder for every person she'd ever met. And she would just put in their name on, like the first time she met them, you got a file, you got your own folder. And then the next time, you, any interaction, she'd make a note of and put it in that folder. Now, I know for a fact that this is not true because when she passed, I inherited her papers, all of them. 43 boxes of papers and nowhere in there was a file with my name on it <laughs> she did however keep absolutely everything anybody ever gave her and had phone bills dating back to 1973 so <laughs> but, but who doesn't right yeah <laughs> um it looks like captain randy says uh, and captain randy is our um our marshal uh, ah, lovely. Our, our, our officer, yeah, and he says just to comment on the when a hold is called, don't drop your guard. Pretty sure it's a safety thing. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, um, you just want yeah, to you, clarify. You don't put you put your arrow back in the quiver, but you keep your shield up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, especially if arrow maker is on the other side of the field. <laughs> and you you had you had asked about how um, how we prefer um, a dress, so. Um, his Excellency, Excellency and I have sort of thrown a curveball to our barony. Um, they like I'm, doing that. <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm 10th century Andalusian, and so I am a baroneta. And, Excellent. Um, Excellency is 10th century Saxon and has decided to go with Spain. So um, we... <laughs> Very cool. I like that. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it's not the end of the world if we get referred to as Baron and Baroness, because we know that it's the the title of our rank it, you know, within the FDA is Baron and Baroness. So, yeah. so there is, a, there is a, a perspective I have here, because my period is um, 6th century Irish, ah. and my Baron, there's no such title of Baron. In fact, he was a small king, and then, so he would be Ri. And then the prince over him would be the Ruri, the over king. And then the king of the 
kingdom would be the Ardri, the High King. Um, okay. So when I refer to my king, I'm talking about, you know, little local Baron Kinnerick. And when I'm talking about the Ardri, I'm talking about Christian. So <laughs> it is, you know, and that's specific to my persona, but my, the people who I associate, they know that that's what I'm referring to when I'm writing my, you know, praise poetry or what have you. Um, yeah. It's not a term that you can use in the SCA, like, yeah. Tiri, land of the kings. No, that's not what it means. It means land king, which isn't very good Irish, but. <laughs> uh, it's okay, I work, I work with an Irishman and every time we discuss the kingdom of Ontario, he's like, you know, that means the land, right? It's the land. I know. Well, here's the fun thing. I live in Canada. That means the village. So, you know, <laughs> it's throughout history. People have referred to their land as the land and themselves as the people of the land. So, you know, I think we're just on tier is the platonic ideal of the SCA. You know. All right. <laughs> Marl. It sounds like, looks like you had a question or a comment? I have two questions. Number one, what you just said about, you know, people calling their place the land and, uh, that, and Canada being the village. Does that mean that Canadians are the village people? Yep, that's us. <laughs> and my second question is. We have a Mountie instead of a policeman. If somebody asks how to address you, what is the gracious way to say, Oh, shucks, I don't need no title. I don't even have an AOA yet. Uh, okay, so <laughs> when you mention awards, there is literally no way for an SCA person to not interpret that as sour grapes. I hate to say that, but it's true. If somebody says, oh, good mistress, and I say, I'm not a laurel, I'm saying I want a laurel, and that's completely unacceptable. What you have to say is, my actual term of address is this. Or you can say, like, I, I, my persona would not have, my rank and title is something that doesn't exist in the SCA. I say, call me poet. I am a poet. I'm a seer. Call me that. Um, or better yet, call me by my name. Just don't call me late to dinner. Um, there's, ways to make it, <laughs> there's ways to make it amusing without going back to that rank thing. Um, one of the it is actually it's it's an interesting piece of of etiquette is that the way we approach ranks in the SCA is very specific and very um, individual. So if someone calls you my lady, they're saying that you are a noble person. If they call you noble gentle, they're saying you're a noble person. If they call you mistress, they are using a period term of address for someone that they know that's female. Or it they doesn't confused with a kink event. <laughs> uh, that could happen as well. Um, especially if you wear a lot of leather. Um, but part of the issue is when we take it personally, how someone chooses to address us. If they're giving you a rank higher than you have, and it's a rank you aspire to, you can laugh and say, that's very sweet that you think I've earned that, but I, I have not yet. Um, and that's a very good way of saying, I'm not a Laurel. I'm saying, I, sure, but no, I'm no, not there yet. Um, uh, if you don't have an AOA and someone has called you, lady, this is Lady Maral, Lady Maral. Uh, again, correct in private, not out in public where it's going to be perceived as saying, I need that and I don't have it yet. Um, correcting in private and saying, hey, by the way, psst. Um, that again, that lowers the uh, impact that it can have, especially that kind of thing when it happens online, when it happens on Facebook, it's, it, it gets held out as an example of discourtesy. So uh, anything else, anybody else got a good story about being called the wrong rank? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I don't know. Our our coronets are awfully pretty, so we've had people call us prince and princess before, and that's always kind of awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, that would be that would be awkward. Yeah. Um, what did you do? What did you say? Um, I believe I stumbled wildly. <laughs> <laughs> More than likely. <laughs> honest you know yeah yeah i stuck i'm pretty sure i stuck my foot in my mouth multiple times nobody um, appeared to me when i was but. you never have a sword in your hand <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh i get it oh, i get it i get it oh boy okay <laughs> um yeah 
Yeah, it's, I, I, but now you've given me good, uh, good options. I am not yet princess, but give me a few more swings at the pals. <laughs> there you go. Oh, so morale, you said um, we're assumed to be gentry, but not nobility. Um, there is no difference between the two. We are not titled nobility, but we are nobles. Um, so that's the difference is, is whether you're- so We're assumed to be second sons or something? Yeah, absolutely. Or firstborn sons who just, you know, or firstborn daughters for that matter. Um, <laughs> Um, oh, the other thing is, so uh, Randy mentioned shiny armor. I get sirred a lot. Um, I am currently uh, studying to be a jouster. And so I'm taking lessons from a modern day jouster who's, you know, he's heard of the SCA. He's been to a couple of things, but it's not real SCA. It's not real combat. He wants to knock guys off their horses. And he said, you know, that certain people get their knickers in a knot at demos and at public fairs when you've got an SEA demo and a modern jousting thing going on at the same time, and the announcer calls out, oh, and now Sir, da 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 of the black is going to fight Sir, blah, 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 of the blue. And the SCAers go, they're not knights. And I'm like, that reflects really poorly on our whole organization because so, they're not playing the same game and they can use <laughs> as as they want. We regularly actually have a demo at a Renaissance fair across from the jousting field, and we don't take we don't say anything in relation to their announcements I'm, whatsoever. I'm, I'm the so different game, different here. thing, completely different. Yeah, it, it, that's the thing, though, is that is that, and and I see this because because I am a shadowing because I've been working in an area where the SCA has not always had a sterling reputation, and. Um, we forget that this happened. We forget that at that demo, somebody, you know, got insulted that so-and-so was called a knight. You know, it sticks in other people's minds. So when you're thinking about how you're behaving, especially if you're in garb, especially if you're, you're basically the face of the SCA, not just the face of you and the face of your branch, but the face of the whole organization. And it, it can definitely affect um, how people think of it. I don't want to suck all the fun out of life, but it is something that I deal with a lot and, and I try to encourage people to be um, aware of that. Mm -hmm. Sir Umpty well, Scratch. <laughs> well, it. It's important It's important to remember that we're, we're supposed to be the SEA's dream, but I think I dream of who we are and what we can be. Yeah. Um, yeah. So striving for that, for that extra is sort of inherently baked into the whole, the whole idea of uh, who we are. So, so, so the, the, the SCA demos where they're calling out that the knights aren't, the, the sirs aren't knights or whatever, do they also refuse to bow at, the, at any Renaissance fair royalty that they have? So, you know, I've seen that happen. And oh. um, we'll go for the whole pageantry. We're part of the fair at that demo. Especially if we're being paid to be there. We're just part of the entertainment. Well, we just get, we get there for free. So that's our payment is yeah. we get free entry. You're, you're getting your members. And members. <laughs> so that's the thing is that if yeah. people go, oh, well, they're really uptight. <laughs> they're so uptight. Who wants to do that? I'd rather watch the Seattle Knights than those guys. Mm -hmm. um, they have so many rules is the other thing I hear a lot of. I'm like, yeah, you're right. We do. We're trying to keep people safe. Um, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> We're also unchoreographed and full contact. Full contact. Um, so are the jousters. I hate to tell you this. The jousters are also full contact. Um, <laughs> good for them. Yeah, good for them. Good for me. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> be fine. We'll be fine. Um, well, this was the thing my jousting instructor told me. He, I said, you know, so he's, are you interested in a hard suit? And I was like, um, no. I spent 40 years trying not to fall off my horse. I'm not going to let some idiot with a stick knock me off. And he's like, that really doesn't happen very often. And I was like, okay, well, what are you talking about very often? He says, I've been jousting for eight years. I've had probably 300 passes in my life. I've never been unhorsed. I was like, oh, okay. He says, you're only going to see the drama. No one's ever going to show you the, you know, the people who have the successful passes who never, they break their lance and nobody <laughs> falls off. I was like, that's a good point. You know, media, it's fake news. It's more exciting <laughs> to see it unhorsing. It is more exciting to see an unhorsing. It is more dangerous to be unhorsed. Absolutely. Um, but again, if they're wearing a full hard suit, it's it's called a lance. Hello. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
when Livia put the lance of the lion in my hands, that's what she whispered to me. <laughs> <laughs> the king went, uh, here's your pointy stick. And she put the, my hands on the lance and she said, um, it's called a lance, hello. <laughs> awesome. I was so flustered and flabbergasted, flabbergasted, I didn't even recognize the quote. I just went, uh-huh, okay, it's called a lance, la la la, for my own stood behind the thrones. And then afterwards, somebody sent me the gif of it. And I was like, oh, for f okay, yeah, I do remember that movie. Oh, no. <laughs> Revoked nerd cred card. You know? uh, okay. <laughs> well, so does anyone else have any other other questions? Or I I I am enjoying this as well, but I know that <laughs> you all have wait, lives. Lives. We have things we have to go do. Am I right? <laughs> I don't know. You guys are in bed already. I don't know what you have to do. <laughs> well, this is our, our guest bed. <laughs> That's the guest bed. Okay, great. I'm in the me I've taken over the media room from my roommates. They were upstairs gaming all day and they're like, we're going to come down and watch a movie. I'm like, you can't. I have a class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it was delightful to meet all of you. Um, I am, please friend me on Facebook. I have a lot of friends and I like more. Um, and, uh, you know. What's your Facebook name? Is it your modern name or your SEA Nancy name? Jean Hedge, the one that's on the, the one that's on the Zoom. Well, yeah. we really appreciate your um, your kindness and generosity in, in talking to us. And um, thank you. I had fun. You guys are yeah. a fun bunch. Um, I was looking forward to coming down to Equestrium, but that's not happening. Uh, eventually, I will meet will. you all in person. And yes. we, will, <laughs> we will bump elbows and we will say hey. Yeah, who knows? We may we may make it up for a crown again one of these days. That would and be then, cool. Yeah, we'll and then you'll be like, oh, maybe I didn't want to meet these. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. She's yeah, got a pretty yeah. raw, unfiltered experience of Terra Primaria already. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also, I mean, I know Nancy and Troy, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of actually reflect both, like the extremes of Terra Primaria yeah, in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are well, a bunch. I had fun. If you have any questions or if I can send my notes on to anyone just let me know I'm happy to send you everything basically it's what I just said but it's like written down. <laughs> well thank you so much again we appreciate very it very welcome uh, excellencies thank, thank you, you. Well, we'll see you on. <laughs> and on, on. <laughs> all right we'll see everyone later we're gonna go hang out with our uh secondary dogs. stepdaughter I don't know <laughs> and the dogs in the, the dog. dog. How would you know? <laughs> Take care. We'll okay, see you Okay, fare thee well. Fare thee well, all good gentle. <laughs> Thank fare you. Fare thee well. Thank you.